Hello my friends and welcome fellow painters back to my painting channel and in this video we're going to be painting a really cool model indeed. This is a model from the Wasteland Warfare, the Fallout game um, and this is a Deathclaw. So this is one of the really really great uh, monsters and crazy creatures that you get in the uh, Fallout Wasteland Warfare game and we're going to paint this one in a cool couple of different techniques and we're going to make this into a bit of a grey sort of uh, version of the Deathclaw. So we're going to start off with a scale 75 necro grey, so this is a nice dark, dark blue grey. And this is going to serve as a great base colour for that grey sort of tone that we're going to build up on top. And that's all I'm doing now is just going to spread this about nice and thin and nice and liberally. Just make sure that I cover the whole model in this colour. So this is something that you don't have to be too precise or perfect about. Just making sure that we just cover the whole thing in this colour. And you can see that it's got that sort of nice blue-grey tone to it as well. Just like so. Once that's done, the underneath then we're going to use a light earth from the AK Interactive and this is going to give us a little bit more of a fleshy tone. So this is going to give us a great sort of two-tone effect between the dark, dark grey sort of top and then the light sort of fleshy underbelly as well. So what you're going to do is just using a nice thin uh, layer, just trying to map out where this is going to go and just painting this across all of that sort of fleshy underbelly so we're going to cover across the chest the stomach underneath between the legs uh, sort of the the underneath of the arms and things like that now by using a nice thin down layer this gives you the opportunity to blend this into the gray in a nice even fashion as well so you don't have to be again too precise or too exact with this but this is just a layer that we're going to place uh, just to make sure that we get that contrast of colour as well. And it's going to create a really, really great contrast of colour between this dark grey, as I say, and this really nice sort of fleshy sort of colour underneath as well. Now we're going to use a couple of washes as we go to tie these colours together anyway. So don't worry too much if there is a little bit of a uh, sort of contrast between the light and dark at the moment. So once that is dry, I'm going to use a black wash from Vallejo. You could use a null oil if you want, or any other black sort of wash or black tone uh, in that sort of sense, you know. And that's all I'm going to do is just spread this over all of the model. I'm just going to show you on the underneath, just to show you how this is going to sit into all of those uh, creases, folds, crevices, and cracks, just like so. And you can really see where it's already starting to sit and pick out all of those sort of folds and details around the rib cage and the muscle tone and things like that. And that's all I'm going to do is just cover, once again, the whole model using the same thing. So I'm just going to paint this black across the whole model. And this is going to tone uh, the model down into a little bit of a darker colour. But it's also going to give us a really cool sort of... Um it's going to give us the opportunity to blend those colors together as well so that lighter fleshy tone and the darker gray is going to tie together and blend together a little bit more naturally now you're going to wait a little while and make sure that that is dry and once that is dry we're going to go back to the light earth and using the light earth and a nice small detail brush so for this i'm using a size zero brush and then we're just going to use the very tip of the brush and with a watered down amount of paint so a nice thin layer of paint we're just going to start to pick all of those colors back out but this time we're going to be a lot more precise we're going to be way way more uh, specific about where we place this and we're going to use the very tip of the brush to really pick out all of those folds and all of those areas where the color is going to stand off the model so we're going to pick out where the light source is going to be and really make sure that we catch some of those lighter areas as we go so as you can see just using the tip of the brush i'm following along areas where um, the shade has sat in those recesses and in those uh, sort of darker areas and in those folds and then i'm just picking out the area outside where we want to lighten things up once that is dry as well, we're going to use then a Vampiric Flesh. This is the next step up, so this is the perfect highlight level. So once you've used the Light Earth, this Vampiric Flesh really does have this really nice creamy sort of effect. So this creates a nice lighter tone uh, to the model. This creates a nice lighter tone to that fleshy underbelly, and this will give us a really cool looking character. And again, you could be a little bit more specific now. So again, using that size zero detail brush, we're really going to start to pick up where we want the light source to really be. And you can really see now that that uh, light earth has dried you can really see that difference between where that black wash has sat and it has darkened parts of the model down and then you can really see where we start to pick out some of the details and bring that highlight back this is an area where you could dry brush if you wanted to uh, but you know on the channel that we do enjoy or that i do enjoy to paint and, and challenge myself using uh, some of the detail points with the brush and try to pick out some of those details and really build uh, sort of character through those brush strokes so it is a bit of fun to paint in this way 
you're going to paint across all of those areas like i say the the, the parts that we want the light to really sort of pick out off uh, the model and really bring that fleshy tone to life as well so this has given us that complete freedom now to really control how light we want those highlights to be because you can put multiple layers on and things like that and you can really build that vibrance of lightness and light tones so we're going to wait for all of that to dry and once that is done then we're going to use flesh wash so i'm using an army painter flesh wash you could use a brightle and flesh shade from citadel if you want and that's all i'm doing is adding a little bit of a flow improver so adding a little bit of a um uh, a little bit of water or flow improver to this and then we're just going to have this pick out some of those areas where i think it's going to look a little bit more fleshy because this vampiric flesh and things like that is a little bit creamy we're just going to add a little bit of warmth and a little bit of tone to it just by adding a very very thin thin glaze of this so we're not using it like a wash we're thinning this down quite a bit so probably about three parts water one part color so one part wash and this is creating this glaze and that glaze then is just going to give us a little bit of a sort of brown tone a little bit of fleshy color and bring a little bit more uh, sort of warmth to the model as well then I'm going to move on and we're going to use ash gray now this ash gray is a great sort of middle of the road gray color we're going to use this ash gray to really pick out all of those colors and details now across the back area of the model so we've done all of the underneath and we've done all of the fleshy areas and and the, the sort of fleshy underbelly and now we're going to do uh, the sort of armored parts and just the top area and as you can see again using that size zero detail brush and just using the very tip of the brush you can see I'm really starting to uh, pick out the details that I really want so we're going to uh, use the brush strokes to really uh, as you can see pulling the brush towards myself pulling the brush downwards really going to start to pick out all of those folds creases all of those dents and things across the carapace and across the back area and the armored back of this uh, death claw and this is a really great mid-tone gray this is going to go really really well on top of the the sort of blue gray that we've already used and this is really going to allow us to to build a great level of sort of um, contrast in those grays as well although we're using a little bit of a monotone palette using a lot of grays we're still going to bring out a bit of color still going to bring out a little bit of life and things like that by adding that flesh shade to the underneath that's given us that warmth in the underneath and that sort of fleshy alive feel and then across the top then using these blue colors we're going to create a little bit of a cooler um sort of darker sort of tone as well so we're going to have that little bit of a difference between warm and cool colors so once the gray is all dry and as you can see i've got all of the gray painted across the model you could dry brush this again if you want to you don't have to use the very tip of the brush you don't have to brush uh, everything on you know it is a bit of a challenge it can be a little daunting but once that's done i'm just using blue tone and again i'm just glazing this gently so using a little bit of water with this again and we're just going to place this across those grays and again that's just going to tie those grays together and what i'm going to do with this i'm just going to bring this quite close especially on things like the arms and the legs i'm going to bring this blue quite close to those areas with the fleshes as well and that's going to tie those colors together having a little bit of that blue sort of seep into the area of flesh around uh, the muscles around the arms is really going to tie it into the back and really build um sort of bring the colors together quite nicely now from there if you wanted to you can then add a little bit of a highlight layer so for this one this is an optional layer and what i'm doing is just use graphite so from the ak interactive again just using again the very tip of my size zero brush and just started to pick out all of the areas that i really want at the details and the highlights to be again this is a nice watered down paint so this is half and half 50 50 so this is half paint half water and this is going to allow it to take to the model in a really really nice even fashion it's going to dry down really well although it may look a little light to begin with it's going to dry down into a really good mid-tone and it's really going to allow some of that blue tone and that other gray underneath that darker gray to really show through and there you go you can really see that we bring in the character to life using those brush strokes as well very very simply uh, very quickly and it's starting to bring the character to life so once all of that bit is dry i'm then going to use a mayhem red so you can use any red that you like this mayhem red is one of my favorites and that's all i'm going to do is just paint this all inside of the mouth just making sure to get rid of any excess red off the end of the brush because we don't want to overdo it and there we go just trying to be careful while painting this all in the inside of the mouth we don't want to get this on the outside area so just trying to be careful not to get this on areas that we've already painted with the gray 
then I'm also using Skeleton Bone from the Army Painter. Skeleton Bone is one of my favorite paints for basing uh, sort of cream colors or white colors. Uh, this Skeleton Bone will give us a really, really great tone uh, on those sort of uh, spines and on the spiny area on the back of the model. Now you could keep all of those gray if you want to. Uh, like I say, there's uh, always so many different ways to paint these sort of game characters and game models and things like that. So you could paint it more of a brownie color because there seems to be uh, versions of the Death Claw that are quite brown. There's gray colors. You know, you could keep all of those areas gray, you know, with black horns and things like that. But I've opted to add a little bit more of a sort of bone color to those spines and the horns and the teeth and things like that. So I'm just using the skeleton bone as a nice base to do so. So once that is dry, we're then going to use an Agrax Earthshade, and again, this is just about using a nice brown sort of shade, a nice earthy tone, so again, you could use a, um, a soft tone uh, from the Army Painter, um, and that would do pretty much the same sort of thing, and that's all I'm going to do is just cover over all of that area that I've painted with this nice creamy bone colour, and just bring those sort of colours into a bit more of an earthy tone, and get a little bit more sort of depth and uh, sort of darker tones and things like that from it. I'm going to cover all of those areas, so uh, the, the horns as well, and uh, this is going to allow the, the, the sort of brown tone and the wash to really sit in those recess points as well, and uh, really bring that depth of the, the horns to life. Just like so. After seeing the uh, Fallout TV show recently and really enjoying a lot of the characters and seeing a lot of the, the TV show bringing this, the, the, the game to life and so many different little um, Easter eggs and fan service and things like that, I really enjoyed watching the TV show and it really inspired me to want to paint uh, something a little bit more from uh, the Fallout game as well. So I thought, what better uh, to start with than a Death Claw? Now what we're going to do is, continuing with our Agrax Earthshade, as you can see I've placed this all over uh, the bone areas, and what I'm doing then is I'm just going to apply multiple layers further down the horns. And I can do the same thing on the claws and on the spines just across the back, and what that means is you're applying multiple layers of shade, but bit by bit you're getting closer and closer towards the tip of the horns or the tip of the claws. So as you can see, I'm not painting all the way down the horns, I'm just reaching a certain level. And bit by by bit then because you're adding this closer and closer and closer to the edge of the claws the edge of the horns each time you're actually darkening it closer and closer towards the end so what you'll end up with is the horns will be much much darker or the spines will be much much darker towards the very tip of the spines than they will towards the bottom um, so that's all you've got to do is just use multiple layers of the same shade as you can see this is now layer number four and we're getting closer and closer and closer to the very edge of those spines and as you can see they're getting darker and darker and darker and it's a really cool way of building sort of those bone sort of uh, effects those sort of bone colors and darkening towards the edge in a very quick and simple fashion it looks amazing Amazing when it's done because it gives you this real cool transition from the bone sort of colors and the bone tones right the way through to this really sort of dark dark brown tones as well so it gives you this really cool contrast again between the highlights and the shaded parts then once all of that is done, I'm going to move on to use a Baal Crimson, so this is just a nice light red colour, and this is just going to be about picking out some of the little bits of details in the mouth, so just picking out that tongue, because he's got a very, very sort of uh, bright, sort of aggressive tongue, and a few different spine areas just inside the mouth as well, just a few little bits picking out, uh, just like so, just trying to be as careful as possible not to get the red on the teeth, go just using the very tip of the brush again just to pick out those creases of the tongue and really bring it to life there we go and again that's going to give us a really cool contrast of color because we have this amazing looking um death claw with loads and loads of sort of earthy tones the grays and things like that and then you have this this red sort of point this uh this red mouth which is just going to attract your attention towards the face which is really really cool now as another optional extra, what I've done with this one, I'm going to go straight in, I'm going to get really messy, it's one of the things that we really, really love to do, something that I love to do on the channel is get as messy as possible, and that's all I'm going to do is just use some weathering powders, and I'm going to use sort of a sandy style weathering powder, because in the Fallout um, universe, everything is uh, post-apocalyptic, 
uh, everything's a desert, everything's all dried out and, and battered and worn. So that's what I'm, all I'm going to do is just use this uh, weathering powder to create this sort of desert and sandy effect all across the base and all around things like the feet and a little bit just across the hands and things like that as well. Now you could be a little bit more specific with this, you can pin wash this on because with weathering powders you can use them with water to create washes and to create uh, your own sort of textures and things like that. But for me, I just want it to be as messy as possible and just go nuts. So that's all I'm doing is just using a nice basin brush and I'm just applying this over all different parts of uh, the base, across the feet and then across a little bit of the hands as well because the death claws do run across the ground on uh, all fours and things like that as well. So yeah, just trying to tie all of those colors together and create a really cool thematic uh, looking uh, design. And all in all, when everything is done, you should have something that looks like this. So we've got our cool, cool uh, blue sort of tones and greys across the top, those brown spines, those uh, bony spines, and then that fleshy underbelly as well. And all in all, it ties together really, really well. I'm really, really impressed with how well this has turned out. It's something that can be done quite quickly, um, or uh, you could spend a lot of time and really, really bring it together as we've done here. So, as always, my friends, thank you so much for tuning in and watching. Thank you for all of your positivity for your patience and waiting for new videos um yeah and if you've enjoyed the video just give me a thumbs up uh, comment below what you think of this who was your favorite uh, character in the tv show what is your favorite fallout game of all time all these things i'd love to hear from you thanks again for watching please take care of yourselves and i will see you all on the very next video